Hi, okay, so we are going to go ahead and take a look at transferring files over SFTP. So this is FTP, FTP is uh, insecure, so we use SFTP. Uh, it's a little bit different in that um, uh, SFTP uh, basically is an offshoot of SSH, which is a secure uh, shell. And then WinSCP is the program that we're going to use. SCP is the file transfer uh, program on uh, in Linux uh, shell. And then WinSCP is basically you know named after that, I would suppose. Okay, so we're on the WinSCP. We just searched on Google WinSCP. We're actually not going to download the initial download here. We're going to go to other downloads. And we are going to go to the portable executable. And then we're going to do this direct download. Okay, once it's downloaded, we're going to extract it. Okay, so we're going to like right click and then extract it. And what we're going to end up with is, is a folder that looks like this. Okay, so you're going to want to keep it in its own folder. You can put it somewhere and then create a, you know, a shortcut if you like. Um, but you want to keep it its own folder because of the fact that it, it creates these other files um, that have your information, like your connection information, which you'll see in a second. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open it up it's by, ex by uh, doing the exe here. Okay, and I'm connecting to, uh, to, a, um, to a remote server. Okay, so this uh, SFTP is for file transfer to remote servers. It just works very well, uh, mainly because of the fact that, you know, when you're working in a, you can do everything in a, uh, in the command line, right? You know, in a shell environment or a command line environment, but it's sometimes it's just easier to, to use uh, SFTP. You're, when you're transferring files, it's just easier to drag and drop. It's just easier. That's it. So using, so in the end, uh, what you'll end, probably end up doing is using a combination of the two, which is what I'm going to kind of show you here. So we use SFTP protocol. We have port number 22. We're gonna connect, we can either connect to the IP address or to the you know, domain name. So if you had like www.yourdomain.com, you could put that here, or you can put the IP address of your server. And then you're gonna put a, user, uh, a username that has rights to SSH. So as long as you're, you don't need an FTP server or anything like that, as long as your computer is set up to accept SSH connections, this will work, okay? So, uh, I mean, just give it a shot. <laughs> it's probably set up to do that. All right, so, uh, okay, so we have our login here. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Now, these are all the defaults. I stored the password there, you have, we'll have the options. So these are all the defaults, and basically what we have here is on the left, we have, um, we have basically the, um, the uh, files that are in my downloads folder, okay? And on the right, uh, if you notice, if I click this up arrow here, I'm navigating the um, the Windows uh, file directory on my local computer. And on the right here, I have my remote computer. So here I'm in var www.html temp. Okay, if I go up one, notice that now I'm in www. I can keep going up. As long as I have rights to the directories, I can keep going up um, all the way up. So this is the root of my Linux file system, my remote file system, right? So my web my website is in var uh, www.html. That's like the default. So var it's likely in var www and then something. Okay. So in my case it's HTML. This is a Joomla website and we're going to be uploading some images. Okay. So in our case we want to put some images in this uh, image folder and we're going to create a new uh, a new folder here. So I can right click in the empty space, click directory, and I can put um, projects, let's call it. I'm going to click OK. Oops. And I made projects with a capital P. Okay, so notice that I'm manipulating the file system. So let's go check it out in our uh, command line. So we're going to open up PuTTY. Remember in Windows, okay, I've already set up my connection in PuTTY. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead over to, uh, I'm going to cd to var www.html images 
and enter, and then I'm going to ls and then dash al to get a kind of a, a nice, good-looking listing. So notice that um, notice that here I have I've just uploaded. This is my username right here, so it's really easy to see. So notice that I'm the owner on a couple things that I've added. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about getting things into this folder here. So we have this images folder. Let's say that I'm in the command line. I just want to get you know move something over from from somewhere online. Okay, so let's say that I've searched. Whoops. Let's say that I've found like some image that I want to use. Let's say that I want to put a. Let's say I've searched data vis visualization. And there we go. So let's say let's say that I want to uh, use this image right here, Wiki Commons image, perfectly legal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL. Notice I have this URL, this PNG file. I'm going to copy it. And then really what I can do in the command line is just do wget and then paste the URL and then enter. And that's going to download it. Okay, and I can show you it's been moved into my folder here. I can just refresh so I can go back to my WSCP and refresh. Okay, so let's say that you are on a slow internet connection. Okay, let's say that you don't, you know, you don't want to be moving, you know, let's say you have a, let's say it wasn't a, a photo, let's say it was a gigabyte file, right? And so you're either going to take time, you know, transferring it down to your local computer than transferring it back up to the FPTP program. In that case, it's really way, way, way better to go in on a command line and just do wget directly from the remote server, right? So in this case, I transfer that file directly from wikipedia.org, right? Now let's contrast that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna save this image. Okay, and now I'm gonna save it to, I've got a file set up for Joomla sample site here, so I'm gonna save it to that. I think I already saved as a photo. Okay, in this case, I'm saving it down to my local computer. Okay, so I'm saving it down to my computer. And then what I can do is I can transfer it up in a couple of different ways. Let's say that I'm, I wanna put in this projects folder I can either, um, you know, I want to go and put it in my projects folder, so I'm going to double click the projects folder. I can just go find it on my computer, like this, you know, so it shows me in Windows 10, it shows me this recent files. I can just drag it up and, and just drop it directly onto the screen here, and it will just transfer automatically. So for a lot of people, it's a lot easier to transfer with, uh, with FTP. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and move some more files over. Um, so I've got my sample site here. I want to move over all these files. Okay. All right, so I have, whoa. So I've got all these files. I'm going to leave this zip file for a second just to kind of show you here. So I'm just going to drag them all over at one time. Uh, except for one, because I'm going to demonstrate it, because I'm going to drag it over at one time. And notice that these are going to upload one at a time. So notice on the bottom here, I have a single file upload, and then at the top, it shows me the whole file transfer. Now, you can imagine that we you know with a, few, uh, with a few images, that works great. Okay, however, let's say that I had to do, let's say that I had wanted to upload all of these images. Okay, so so let's say I wanted to do all of these files. It might take a long time. Let's say I had thousands of files, right? It would be super inefficient to do it like that, okay? Um, now, I can tell you that I can also, I just want to show you just quickly here. If I wanted to, I could also just pull it over from here. So I can actually click, and then I can just drag it right over, okay? And I can just do it from right inside Win SCP2. Okay, the other thing I can do is I can go ahead and I can actually, um, let's say that I wanted to, um, instead, of, instead of transferring things over one at a time, okay, let's say that I had thousands of files and I wanted to transfer over them, them over efficiently, okay? So I'm just gonna call this project two, okay? Let's say that I had thousands of files, I just wanted to transfer them over efficiently, okay? So what I could do is that I could select all the files, okay? I could right click on them. Now I've installed a program called 7-Zip, okay? You need to install a zip utility usually. In Windows, you can also right click and do new compressed folder, okay? 
and we can call these photos. Okay, so a compressed folder is called a zip file, right? So um, a, you know, there's lots of different types of compression. The most common probably for Windows users is zip. Okay, and basically what it means is we take all these files and we put them into one single file. Okay, and that this thing, even though Windows makes it looks like a folder, it's actually one file. Okay, so on FTP, I can't just pull over a whole folder. Okay, I'm still going to have to transfer things one at a time. But what I can do, notice that Windows treats it a lot like a folder. It's very confusing, but it's actually one file. Okay, it's a compressed file containing a bunch of other files. Okay, so what I can do now is I can just pull this over and transfer it in one shot, right? So it's one big file going up it, and it reduces the overhead tremendously. Okay, so if you have thousands and thousands of files, it's much, much, much more efficient to, uh, to pull over, to you know, compress a bunch of files all at one time and then move them over as one single zip file, okay? Because the overhead of FTP is a lot. The overhead meaning the, the, the communication that's necessary between the FTP program and the server to move a single file is often more, you know, more data than the, the actual file in a lot of cases. So, so using this compressed folder is a, is a really good way to do it. Okay, so once I move over to the compressed folder, some, zip, some FTP programs actually have custom commands here where I can unzip, okay, notice. So I can untar gzip, here okay and it'll launch a separate cell shell session we're not going to go ahead and do that what we're going to do is we're just going to have our putty you know open already and so if we list right remember we're going to list we're in images the var wwhtml images uh, folder right here and then we're going to cd into project two okay and then we're going to list here just to see what's in here okay and we got photos.zip and so we're going to unzip photos.zip, okay? All right, so we inflated it. Okay, so notice that now we right click here and refresh. And notice now we basically just unzipped all of those photos right into this folder, okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to right click on the original zip file and delete it so it isn't you know, cluttering up our, our server. So those are two methods. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Those are two methods. You know, we, we introduced WinSCP, okay, so Secure File Transfer Protocol. Okay, so it's FTP, but secure. Uh, and we introduced a couple of different strategies, right? So we introduced a strategy of, you know, transferring um, files individually by dragging and dropping them. We also looked at um, compressing uh, many, many files into one a uh, zip file or compressed file and then unzipping it, transferring the zip file and unzipping it on the server. And we also looked at the advantage of actually using the um, command line just to directly transfer files from server to server without ever downloading them onto your local computer. So I hope this helps and best of luck.